This video is powered by YouTube memberships and Patreon. See the link in the description and learn how you can support videos like this. Ken Rosenberg has been a friend to Tommy ever since he arrived here in Vice City. He has set up jobs, made connections and helped him settle into this town. Now that Tommy has toppled Ricardo Diaz and his Colombian drug enterprise, he is on the brink of greatness and he could not have done it without him. If Tommy was to call anyone a friend, it would be Ken. That is why Tommy put him in charge of his next valuable operation. To take that last step towards being king of Vice City, Tommy needs to galvanize his power. To get and keep power, you need money and the promise of more. To develop many revenue streams, to own assets. Tommy had already bought the boatyard and BJ Smith's car dealership to help with that. Tommy's next idea was buying up the city's most eminent nighttime destination, the Malibu Club. Not only for the legitimate revenue it produces and the opportunity to clean drug money, but as a base of operations for a plan Tommy has had in his head for a long time. A plan to carry out the biggest heist that this city has ever seen to raid one of the most secure and protected spots in Vice City, to rob Little Havana's El Banco Corrupto Grande. I'm the Patient Wolf, and I'm a video game storyteller. If you've not seen the story of Tommy Vassetti's rise to the top, you can watch that now at the link below. But there are many other stories to tell in Vice City, and you can watch them all now as a YouTube member or patron. See the links to those below and support this ongoing work to tell all the stories this franchise has to offer right up to and beyond GTA 6. So stay subscribed and notified for every upcoming release and see the description for other great stories you can watch after this. But before you do, remember to hit like. I'm the Patient Wolf. And this is the story of the Malibu Club. The Malibu Club in Vice Point, grandiosely positioned on the banks of the city's canal, on the chicane of the famous Ocean Drive where cars need slow down in veneration to pass it. Not many pass it at night. The most popular dancing spot in the city where the richest and most connected revelers spend their cash. Tommy? has been here before a few times. Not that dancing and drinking are things he does much of. He came here to meet a regular of the club, Kent Paul. Whatever you want, I'll get you, girl. Kent is as connected as anyone in Vice City and he has pointed the way for Tommy on many occasions. It was from Kent that Tommy first got the tip for the heist. I reckon you're going to owe me a favour or two after this, sunshine. I'll see you later. A heist only a fool or a sizeable, skilled and meticulously trained crew would do. Buying the Malibu was the first step towards completing the heist. The business made good money and the books would launder more, but the club's private rooms would make the perfect base of operations. Tommy had tasked Ken Rosenberg with its refurbishment and kitting it out for their needs. And Ken didn't do things by halves. Look at this, this is great. I've got us this mini bar installed. We got a whole bar downstairs, Ken. Decoration, soft furnishings, even a scale replica of a boat to honor their absent friend Juan Cortez, who left on the boat it represents. Well, I got the chalkboard you asked for. This would be key to outline plans. Tommy has his staging room. Now he needs his crew. The cornerstone of this crew will be a safe man. And for this job, he'll need a genius. Safe, 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 safe. I got it. This guy will blow you away. Cam Jones is one of the best safe crackers in the business. His front for this enterprise is Cam's can openers on the edge of Viceport. Except he's not there anymore. He's about to have a new home for the next decade. He was caught during a robbery and has received 10 years for his crime. But he's not at his final destination yet. He's in a police headquarters cell awaiting transfer. I think he's about to get paroled. Tommy hasn't time to make do. He needs Cam Jones, his best chance of pulling off this job. Because this job is not just any bank heist. The bank is tough to crack, well protected, with hair trigger security systems, but that's not the dangerous part. 
Tommy targets a particular safe deposit box with untold, unmarked, untraceable cash within it. The box is owned and managed by the city's SWAT. Their unofficial retirement fund, a stash of all the bribes and drug money seizures Vice City's finest has taken over the years. Something for them to look forward to after their 30 years are up. They will not take kindly to losing that and will not rest to recover it if lost. That's why he needs the best, to do it quickly and be gone with the wind. Tommy needs Cam Jones so much, he's going to break him out. He figures they're so busy protecting the city, they won't think to protect their own shop. It's easy to get into the locker rooms. And easier now, dressed as a cop, to access their main office. The line between cop and crook never more blurred. They're too wrapped up in the uniformity of their own day to notice this uniform take a key card. Head to the basement and open a cell door. Cam Jones? Yeah, that's me. I'm busting you out. Whatever you say. The station is alerted. Tommy takes out who he needs to and with his man exits the way he came. From blue to green, Tommy drops Cam off at his safe house. He knows the price of his freedom. I'm gonna be doing a job and you're my safe cracker. Beats losing my ass in his cell. They will reconvene later at the Malibu Club. El Banco Corrupto Grande is the largest bank in the city. Tommy will need more to his crew to pull this off. The deposit box safe is situated on the top floor, accessed by a lift up on the mezzanine. He needs two more guys, one with muscle and firepower to keep the foyer locked down, and one circling the block outside with the getaway car. They need to be out of there before anyone is alerted and away. Tommy heads to the Malibu. We need a stick-up man, you know one? Hey, Tommy! 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 This stuff keeps you sharp, man! Woo! I could be your stick-up man! Stick him up! Stick him up! You ain't a stick-up man, you're an idiot! Now get yourself a drink and shut up! Ken's substance abuses have increased since Tommy came to town. It started off to settle the nerves and bypass the fear of what he was caught up in. And after the Vassetti gang took the biggest coke operation in the city from the Colombians, he couldn't see a reason to stop. It was on tap for him. Tommy sees no reason to stop him either. He continues to be the man in the know and vital to the organization, but he can't be trusted with frontline operations. Both with and without coke, he's too jumpy. Hey, get out of my way! Yeah, 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 ow, ow, ow. Relax. Cam, what do you think? The best shooter in this town is a guy named Cassidy. Is that so? Yeah, a military guy, or thinks he is. I doubt he was ever in the army, but he certainly knows how to get a hold of guns. He'll be down at the shooting range. There are three ammunitions in Vice City. One in Ocean Beach, he first visited with Lance. Another in the mall at Vice Point. But the one downtown is the only one with a shooting range. You Phil Cassidy? Why? I'm looking for a man who can handle a gun. Next to the word gun in the city's own dictionary would be the face of Phil Cassidy. He's obsessed with them. Munitions of any kind is all he thinks about. He collects them, tests them, both guns and explosives. He even sells them at his junkyard north of Little Haiti. If you ever caught him without a gun, it would have been prized from his cold dead hands. But before he can agree to work with someone, he needs to play with them first. <laughs> That's huge. Tommy's no stranger to a gun. Son, after shooting like that, if you asked me to be your wife, I'd say yes. Tommy has his shooter, and it's Phil who knows where to find the last member of the crew. We need a driver. Tommy, I'll do it. I can drive. <laughs> you want Hillary, mister. Hillary's a real deal. Hillary King, a known and renowned getaway driver. Currently operating, but he has had dealings with the law. The VCPD has a file on him and know him and his associates Cam and Phil. And they know his neuroses. He functions but is crippled by his child traumas. 
He has anxiety, low self-worth. He seeks out abusive relationships. To soothe himself, other than compulsively eating, he craves speed and mastery over his vehicle. Phil gives him a call. I got me a guy from up north. He wants a driver for a bit of action. Okay. Well, he'll do it, no problem. Well, there might be a little problem. See, he has abandonment issues. Seems he won't work for anyone who can't beat him. Why can't I meet someone normal for a change? I'll drive for you if, and only if, you can drive properly. Leave me alone, and I'll never forgive you. If Tommy didn't need to be inside the bank, he would have chosen himself as driver. There are few that have escaped more scrapes behind the wheel than him. The race takes them through Vice Point, right at the VCPD, where he broke out cab, down into Ocean Beach, past Raphael's, where Ken sent him to smarten up to meet Cortez when he first arrived, past the Pole Position Club, where he dropped off Mercedes afterwards, and a place he has his eye on as a possible asset for the business. If he can pull off this heist, that might just fund it, past the mall, past the office development he scuppered for Avery Carrington, and back into Vice Point, to where they started at his Malibu club. Hillary on his tail, but beaten this time. Okay, I'll drive for you, but please tr treat me bad. Tommy's crew is complete. Time for the job. Time to rob the bank and Vice City's SWAT division. First, a pep talk. As you can see, gentlemen, this is going to be the easiest buck we ever made. Hey, Tommy, seriously, you gotta consider going into law. What the hell are you smoking, man? This ain't no simple plan. With a team like this, it's gonna be no problem. We got Cam on safe. Phil, you and me will handle security, and Hillary will drive the get car. Don't... Ken here, he washes the money for us, and he keeps the drinks on ice. <laughs> With the enormity of the task, a pep talk of levity and brevity is the only thing to settle the nerves. Keep driving around the block, okay? They have their getaway in place, their guns, and their disguise. We walk into the bank. This is a raid! <laughs> we wave the gun around. Nobody move! <laughs> Everybody up against that wall! Phil, hold down the fort. Come on, Cam, the vault's upstairs. And leave very rich men. That's the plan, anyway. <laughs> Damn! It's a flangy 9000. This could take hours to crack. Or five minutes if you could find a manager. You, you're coming with me. Okay, okay, just don't shoot. Things still sweet? Sure, everything's real quiet. We just need your key code and we're good. You try anything and you're dead. I'm gonna check on Phil, I'll be right back. I told you not to touch that alarm! The SWAT team will be here any minute. Tommy, the vault's open! Vice City SWAT have a vested interest in El Banco Corrupto Grande. That minute comes sooner than they think. You are completely surrounded. This was not the plan. They're storming the place! Take cover! Go, go, go! Death, where's Hillary? I'll give him abandonment issues. But Hillary won't abandon them. He breaks through the barricade, loyal to the job, to his master. Hey guys, get in, I got you covered. Hillary gives his life so his friends and his new employer can escape through the cops, breaking line of sight, seeking refuge at Cam's hideout, just north of the bank. Off the streets, in the money, but one man down. We made it! We're rich! Rich! Yeah! <laughs> Kent Paul is there to congratulate them and himself for the tip. What I tell you, Tommy? What I tell you? Ben Swap better watch out when Kent Paul is in town. Come on, give me a bigger slice, mate. Come on, I gotta get some new threads. Casualties are a risk these men accept, as is changing plans on the fly, but they did the job and have their prize. But they'll need to stay out of SWAT's way for a long while. This is just the start for Tommy and his stick-up crew. It's doubtful they'll ever do a job that big again, but the Malibu Club will serve as a base for future heists. And Ken will be there to oversee it. His base now. He much prefers it to his law office in Washington Beach. 
With future heists and the revenue from the club, this will contribute sizably to the war chest of the Facetti gang. Money rolling in every day. And there are plenty more ways to make money in Vice City. Tommy would buy up other businesses like Kaufman Cabs and the Interglobal Film Studios. To watch those stories right now, become a member or patron. Hit join and get access to all my videos weeks before they air on YouTube. And check the links below for those already out and ready for you to watch next. Thank you to everyone on the screen now who support this ongoing work right up to and beyond the release of GTA 6. So if you're excited for that, make sure to subscribe and stay notified. I'm The Patient Wolf and this has been the story of the Malibu Club.